The shocking reasons why you cannot forgive. This information comes out of workshops and one-to-one -one sessions I've had with people on the topic of forgiveness. In this video we're going to look at the reasons why people can't forgive, what blocks them from forgiving and what gets in the way. The idea is by looking at those blocks and those hindrances to forgiving, we can see how to let them go so that forgiveness can become easier. So the first reason, and it may well be the number one reason why people can't forgive, is that nobody taught them how. How can you know how to forgive if nobody taught you how to forgive? People may have preached or moralised at you and told you you should forgive, but those who preach forgiveness usually don't teach forgiveness. And if nobody showed you a practical and specific way to forgive, how could you possibly know how to do it? Is forgiveness something you should know how to do automatically, like breathing? No, it doesn't seem to be. Look at the world around you. Is there any evidence that forgiveness comes to people as easily as breathing? Not really. There's not much sign of forgiveness being an everyday thing in most people's lives. Most people need to be taught how to forgive in order to be able to do it. The exception to this is people who are in such intense pain about something that was done to them that they cannot stand it any longer. They have to forgive in order to let go of the awful pain they're in. However, this is the same as pushing non-swimmers into some deep water. Sure, some of them will manage to swim, sort of, but all of them would benefit from a few lessons on how to swim. Similarly, virtually everyone can benefit from a few lessons on how to forgive. Being taught that we should forgive, but not being taught how to forgive, seems to be fairly common in many parts of the globe. To be taught that you should do something, and also be told that it's incredibly important that you do it, but then not how to do that thing makes people crazy. You were probably taught that you should forgive and that will make you a good person or you, you will even get a better place in heaven or have good karma or whatever if you forgive. Yet nobody took the time to teach you how. You might start to wonder, as I did, am I the only person who doesn't know how to forgive? And it may become your dark secret. You then start feeling guilt and shame about your inability to forgive. Think about what that is like for a person when the very thing that should set them free, forgiveness, becomes instead a source of guilt and shame. Instead of forgiveness freeing them, it binds them. It binds them to not feeling good enough. It binds them to low self-esteem. Somebody mentions forgiveness to them and they feel a twinge of guilt or feel a twinge of shame and want to change the subject of the conversation. But it's not their fault they don't know how to forgive. This makes them prone to fear, guilt, shame and feeling unworthy. This also makes them prone to being manipulated by fear, guilt and shame and feeling unworthy. Another reason that people can't forgive is fear. You might be afraid that if you forgive the person who hurt you, then that person will be in a position to hurt you again. A variation on this is the fear that forgiving someone is rewarding bad behaviour. Now this kind of fear is only common sense because we want to avoid being hurt by someone who has already hurt us. However, as we explore what forgiveness actually is over the next few minutes, I think you'll see that such a fear is not necessary. Forgiveness gives us the freedom to stay and the freedom to walk away. We can forgive and still choose to keep ourselves out of harm's way. The whole situation gets a lot clearer when we unpack reconciliation from forgiveness. Forgiveness and reconciliation are different but related processes. First, let's get clear about what reconciliation is. Reconciliation has to do with whether we want to have an ongoing relationship with them and what that will look like. If we are afraid that they might hurt us again, and especially if they show no remorse, then we might decide it is better not to have anything more to do with them. This is particularly true if they are violent, if they are persistently abusive, or they are simply just not right for us. There might be no good reason to reconcile with such people and we would need to explore further to see whether this is the case. Therefore, we can make a decision about the relationship separately from our decision about forgiveness. Even if we decide to not have a reconciliation with the person, 
we might still decide that we want to forgive them and to let go of any resentment and any ill feeling we have towards them. So if reconciliation is about what we decide to do about an ongoing relationship with someone, what is forgiveness? Forgiveness is letting go of wanting to punish. When we are holding on to not forgiving, then usually we want to punish someone. That's what keeps our unforgiving state in place. Of course, the person we might want to punish may be ourselves. This definition, forgiveness is letting go of wanting to punish, is the definition I work with the most. It is usually the one which is most effective. It is effective because usually when a person does not want to accept it as true, more often than not, it is because they are angry at someone they believe they should not be angry at. And they're wanting to punish someone they believe they should not want to punish. For example, maybe you grew up in a culture where you must always respect your parents. If so, that would make it really hard for you to accept any reason which you feel angry at your parents. If you don't accept this anger, it can get in the way of you being able to forgive. If you really object to this definition for some reason, try another definition like forgiveness is letting go of suffering. However, for our purposes here, I'll stick with forgiveness is letting go of wanting to punish. A wonderful thing about this definition of forgiveness is that it's completely unconditional. They can be living or dead. We can let go of wanting to punish them. We might want to reconcile with them or we might not want to reconcile with them. We can let go of wanting to punish them. They might have apologised or they might not have apologised. We can let go of wanting to punish them. Our forgiving them has nothing to do with them. It is our business and it is not their business at all. When we can see forgiveness as completely unconditional and is distinct from reconciliation, we are always free to forgive or not as we choose. We don't need to hold back from forgiveness out of the fear that the person will hurt us again. They can only hurt us if we reconcile with them and they have not changed their behaviour. Even if we decide to not have a reconciliation with the person, we might still decide that we want to forgive them. Therefore, we have two distinct choices to make. One choice is to forgive them, which as I say is letting go of wanting to punish them. We can always do that, unconditionally. The other choice is whether or not to reconcile with them. Reconciliation may sometimes be conditional and sometimes it won't happen at all. We may decide I just don't want anything more to do with them. In some situations we might decide that we're open to negotiate for a possible reconciliation and might even look at conditions we could put on a possible reconciliation. I call that tough forgiveness. However, it's much better to do some forgiveness work before deciding what to do about a possible reconciliation. And that's so that we're acting out of clarity and compassion and not acting out of being emotionally entangled in a toxic relationship or acting out of feeling vengeful towards someone. If we don't do forgiveness work before considering what to do about reconciliation, we might reconcile with them even when it's against our own best interest because we feel guilty for wanting to leave them. Or we might refuse to reconcile even when it would be in our best interest because we want to punish them. So this is why it's important to do forgiveness work first and then look at the reconciliation because it makes things much clearer about whether reconciliation is a good idea or not and how to go about it. Forgiveness frees us from toxic relationships as it frees us from both guilt and the desire for vengeance. Forgiveness gives us a much wider and wiser view so that we can see what is best in terms of any possible reconciliation. Another reason people sometimes don't want to forgive is that they believe that they get value from their anger, their sadness, their pain and the opportunities that these give them to play the victim. Anger, sadness and pain can be a way of bonding with others in social groups or in online social networks. We may have created a sense of belonging based on our shared suffering. We could be relating to others through sharing our experiences of being a victim. It can be to our benefit to be part of a mutual support group. If we later allow ourselves to move on, 
when the time comes to move on. However, in order to move on, we ultimately need to learn to forgive and to let go of the past. Anger can sometimes be useful as fuel to help us fight an injustice or make a change in our lives. We can get away with that in the short term, but in the long term, living off anger can be toxic and bad for psychological and physical health. If you're someone who sees anger as a useful medicine for some situations, bear in mind that too much of any medicine becomes a poison. Anger, pain, sadness and so on are all forms of suffering. If we believe that certain changes need to be made in society and we want to be a part of making those changes happen, we can do this without needing to stay in our suffering, without needing to stay in the unforgiving state which supports that suffering. We can do this by aligning with and joining with those groups and individuals who have gone beyond blame. We can join with those who have a positive vision for humanity and those who have a positive regard for their fellow human beings. We can belong to those groups who are out to assist in the unfolding of human potential by focusing on the development of what is best for everyone. Holding on to anger is sometimes a defence against sadness. Holding on to sadness is sometimes a defence against anger. Some people are more comfortable staying in their anger and don't want to deal with the sad, vulnerable parts of themselves. They use their anger as a way of keeping the sadness at bay and disassociating themselves from their vulnerabilities. Other people are more comfortable staying in their sadness and don't want to deal with the angry, aggressive parts of themselves. They use their sadness to keep their anger at bay. They don't want to accept their anger as it does not fit in with who they think they are. We may feel empowered playing the angry victim rather than playing the sad victim, but we're still playing the victim. Any form of playing the victim is not playing out the best within ourselves. It is not doing justice to our true potential to grow into wise, effective and loving human beings. Also, the aggressive defence we use while playing the part of an angry victim is often experienced as an attack by those we believe we are defending ourselves against. This can often escalate the situation and make those who oppose us even more entrenched in their position. Part of this issue of holding on to the past is that people sometimes hold on to pain as a reminder. They use pain like a fridge magnet, you know, like one of those magnets you put on your fridge with a note under it to remind you of something. The pain acts as a reminder. Don't do that again. We might be using the pain from the past to act as a reminder to prevent us repeating the same mistakes. This can make us reluctant to let go of that pain as we see it as useful. However, holding on to pain is a form of self-punishment and it can easily become toxic. It is difficult to have a reconciliation and create a good relationship with someone who keeps hurting us. This is true even if we are the person who keeps hurting us. It is difficult to have a good relationship with ourselves well, we keep hurting ourselves by holding on to all pains and all painful situations. In other words, self-punishment damages our relationship with ourselves. It cripples us internally as it damages the relationship between the different parts of ourselves and it lessens our capacity to lead a useful, productive and meaningful life. Self-punishment weakens us and thereby gives us even more to judge and blame ourselves for. It can also cause an acute and intense form of loneliness because we have not much feeling of friendship and kindness towards ourselves. When we are not a friend to ourselves, we become deeply lonely. We miss the person who could have been our best and closest friend, namely us. When we are not a friend to ourselves, we cannot feel for ourselves. When we cannot feel for ourselves, we reduce our capacity to feel for others too and the resulting sense of isolation can cause us to develop addictions or compulsions, which makes it even more likely we will do things which we'll end up feeling guilty or ashamed about. On the other hand, self-forgiveness and also forgiveness of others empowers the best on us, enables us to create a healthy feeling of self-encouragement. Forgiveness enables us to recreate and rebuild our lives in healthy life in enhancing ways. 
For example, we all usually have an internal commentary going on from our inner critic, assessing and judging us, usually negatively, and sometimes reminding us of things we did wrong in the past. Forgiveness transforms our inner critic into a best friend. Whether we forgive ourselves or we forgive others, this gradually causes our inner critic to transform into a wise guide or kindly parent. The more we practice forgiveness, the more positive our inner self-talk becomes. Punishing ourselves for mistakes we made in the past does not serve us, nor does it serve anyone. Our self-negating attitude renders us unable to offer much. I like to say that self-forgiveness is one of the most unselfish things you can do, because by self-forgiveness you allow more good into your life and then you've got much more good to share with others. We need to forgive, including forgiving ourselves, so that we can let go of the past. We can then grow in wisdom, insight and compassion as we gain them from our experiences rather than the bitterness and resentment that comes from not forgiving. Forgiveness is also what does the most to ensure that we don't repeat the mistakes of the past. Another reason people find it hard to forgive is a form of self-judgment. But first, before we explore that, let me give you a quote. It's from the book Forgiveness is Power. Forgiveness is easy when we find healthy ways to meet the genuine needs of the parts of us which don't want to forgive. This is really important because another reason people find it hard to forgive is self-judgment. This is part of all this crazy making feelings that can arise in us when we are taught that we should forgive, but nobody teaches us how to forgive. This creates a split inside us. The logic behind the split goes something like this. Forgiveness is good, therefore the part of me which wants to forgive is good. If the part of me that wants to forgive is good, then the part of me which does not want to forgive must be bad. This is wrong, this is bad logic is what it is. The part of us which doesn't want to forgive is actually often trying to protect us. You know, it's often trying to protect us from harming ourselves again and may not necessarily be doing so out of wanting vengeance or anything like that. It may have genuine reasons. This is not actually our negative feelings or angry feelings or vengeful feelings that get in the way. It's actually our lack of acceptance of those feelings that get in the way. And then once we accept those feelings, it becomes much easier to forgive. Once we acknowledge our true feelings about a situation, forgiveness becomes a lot easier. Why? Because in order to forgive, we need to be honest about what we are forgiving. And that has a lot to do with the feelings which arise for us around that situation. Once we acknowledge our true feelings, we can let them go. But first we need to acknowledge them. Sometimes our aversion to our raw, primitive, gut-level feelings get in the way of our ability to forgive. This is especially true for nice people who don't want to face the darker sides of themselves. If we have a concept of ourselves as a nice person who never feels bitter, hate, blind fury or an urge to kill, that can get in the way of our ability to forgive if those feelings are arising for us about a person or situation we need to forgive. Covering our genuine feelings with a plight and superficial mask does not contribute to the forgiveness process, whereas genuine honesty does contribute to the forgiveness process. Can something as important as forgiveness be based on anything other than complete honesty? Not in my experience. Therefore, part of the process of forgiving a situation needs to include a way to become more and more honest about how we really feel about that situation. However, although we need to be honest about our feelings in order to forgive effectively, we don't need to get caught up in those feelings. There's no need to get all caught up in the past. There's no need to relive the past. But we do need to acknowledge our honest feelings about the past. We acknowledge those feelings in whatever form they take in the present moment. Forgiveness is real, and like anything that is real, it can only happen in the present moment. We might need to uncover honest feelings a bit at a time, and that is one of the reasons that the four steps to forgiveness work so well, as it enables people to do that, enables them to uncover their feelings step by step and a bit at a time. 
In other words, we can only forgive to the extent we're willing to acknowledge what it is that needs to be forgiven. We need to include all of you in an honest and genuine way in order to be able to forgive. Now that sometimes includes very raw <laughs> feelings about a situation or a person. Including all of yourself makes forgiveness easier, not harder. The more you include all of yourself, the more genuine forgiveness happens in your life. Forgiveness then becomes more of an easy, natural flow. Often when I give workshops on forgiveness, I see people's eyes light up as they look around with a surprised sparkle in their eyes, as if to say, and sometimes they actually say, wow, this is so easy. <laughs> For the purposes of this video, I think there's one last item I'd like to look at. And it's to do with the mystery, the mystery of forgiveness. Some people hesitate to do something if they don't know for sure how to do it or they don't know for sure what it is they're actually doing. Now, that's understandable. However, if you hold back from forgiving till you understand it, it's very unlikely that you'll ever forgive. You can't understand forgiveness unless you actually do it and do it a lot. So please don't hold off from forgiving till you understand it. Do it and then, and only then, you'll begin to understand it. Forgiveness can have an air of mystery and mystique about it, which makes it hard to understand. However, there's lots of things in life we use which we don't understand. For example, what is electricity? What is it really? Beyond the superficial definition as a flow of charge or a flow of electrons, and unless you fully understand quantum physics, then you won't have much of an idea of what electricity actually is except in a superficial way. Even then, the deeper you go into what electricity actually is, the deeper the mystery becomes. Yet, you use electricity every day for making your tea or coffee in the morning, or for powering your mobile phone, or for making toast, or what have you. Funny to think that we're using a deep cosmic mystery like electricity to make a tea and to chat to our friends, but why not? We as humanity are also a bit of a cosmic mystery too. After all, our bodies include elements, which are the stuff of stars, literally, because our bodies have elements which can only have come from suns which exploded eons ago. Therefore, we are surrounded by mysteries, and there's no need to let the mystery around forgiveness get in the way of you actually using it. Forgiveness is power. It's a power you can use. Take the power.